And we're in. Yeah. Here's our tractor engine. We're going to strip it back so we can get the cylinder head off. Uh, and we're going to see what condition the engine's in inside, see what condition the cylinder bores are in, um, see if they've got a lot of wear. Just looking at the top end, looking at the cylinder head, allows us to see whether we need to go further into this engine rebuild. We're going to start by taking off the rocket cover. All these injector pipes have to come off. The injectors will come out and uh, then we'll take the manifolds off as well, off the back here, and anything else that gets in our way off will come the cylinder head and it's a heavy cylinder head because this engine is a great big cast iron lump. I reckon that farmers use their tractors until they go no more. So I'm expecting that inside this engine we're going to find lots and lots of wear because this is a little four cylinder uh, cast iron diesel engine. It's very, very heavily built. It's real proper heavy construction but it means that nothing is lightweight. And then once we've got the cylinder head off, we can see the pistons inside the bores to see if they're serviceable or not. If they're unserviceable, then we'll have to strip the engine back even further, which will mean, which will mean taking the fuel pump off and making sure that we get all the timing marks all right, because if we take the fuel pump off and we don't know where to put it back, uh, it needs to be synchronized with the engine so that it will actually operate the injectors at the correct time. So it's, it's not a massively complicated thing, but if we don't get it right, the engine doesn't work. And if the engine doesn't work, then it's just a great big lump of cast iron sitting at the front of a tractor. Right, okay, so let's get on with stripping this down. We've got a little tray at the front there to drop all our parts in. It's all gonna need a proper clean up oh once, yeah. uh, once we've stripped it down anyway, so there's no need to worry too much there. Right then, Andrew. So of course this is um, this is a diesel engine, yeah. But not all tractors run on diesel, did they? No, <laughs> some of them started off on running on fuel, a petrol, and they used to turn over to a TVO, tractor vaporisation oil. Oh, right, so TVO, tractor vaporisation oil, paraffin. Actually, Paraf yeah. yeah, people people used to run them on paraffin. So they'd start on petrol because they'd start easily on petrol, and then once the engine's got some momentum and it's and it's spinning and it's warmed up slightly run it on, switch it over onto paraffin because paraffin is cheap. Cheaper, yeah. more available I'd imagine, yeah. Yeah, probably rougher running and <laughs> with much lower octane, so didn't burn so, 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 so magnificently. However, it was cheap, so just yeah. run them all day on that. It's all about, well, farms are all about, they're a business, it's all about making yeah. money, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. We got anything else connected? No, let's give it a... Okay, off comes our rocker cover. And, wow. as suspected, this is absolutely filthy inside. That is really horrible. I don't reckon that this tractor has seen any maintenance in, in a good 30 years. Certainly not this century. It might have been filled with oil, but I mean, look at that. That is the filthiest, muckiest, most horrible, sludgy rocker cover I have ever taken off in all my days. And now my eye is drawn to this monstrosity of filth and grime that is the rocker covers. Look at the state of this underneath here. This is absolutely, by far and away, the dirtiest, <laughs> most horrible engine I've ever seen inside. If this is what it's like inside here, and th this would indicate very little maintenance, then I expect that this thing is going to be, you want it in a word? Shagged. <laughs> so manifolds. we're now about to take the inlet manifolds off. Okay. Okay, so here's the exhaust manifold. Seems all complete. And the inlet manifold. 
inlet butterfly here is really stiff and badly worn. And just looking at it, you can see <laughs> it's got split hoses. Whether it's due to, well, just general wear and getting hot or perish. Yeah, well, pipe. I mean, that hose looks it's older look than I am. <laughs> so, and that's saying something. So yeah. <laughs> Probably 3.8 Whitworth. Yeah, more than likely. Yeah, the injector pipes normally are on these old engines. Yeah. There's still diesel retained in these injector pipes at the, uh, at the injectors here. I believe um, in France, they call this the English spanner. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, we don't often have a diesel engine on car sausage, but we have today. So I'm in my element, because I used to work on diesels all the time. Did I tell you I was a bus mechanic once? And the very first bus I worked on was 6840, which was um, a 1978 Merlin National. The first double-decker that I worked on was 6199, which was uh, a Daimler Fleet Line CRG6 Electra with an Alexander H45, I think, 27, uh, 27D body. It might have been a slightly more... Oi, what well, camera? Wake up! We Oi. are ready to get our injectors out. There we go, there's our drip rail. Injectors. A little, like a, a little like a modern car with a fuel injector, uh, basically a device through which the fuel is passed at very high pressure. And what happens with the injector is the fuel's pushed in and then it lifts a little needle which has got a very, very strong spring behind it. And when it lifts that needle, the fuel can push out through the injector nozzle. The injector nozzle has lots of little, tiny little drillings in it. And as the fuel comes through, it is actually atomized. So it's atomized and goes into the, into the combustion chamber just as the piston comes up through the cylinder, creates compressed air, which is, which is hot, and basically ignites that atomized fuel. Simple idea, brilliant, but it needs tiny, tiny, accurate little drillings and all that kind of stuff to go on, and it needs to be timed perfectly as well. This is a poor old engine, isn't it? Yeah, this it's, is. It's this definitely is. in its day. <laughs> needs some good love, this thing. It needs plenty of love. So here's one of our injectors, and I can't mm. actually see physically with my eyes the little nozzles in here through which the um, diesel is passed and therefore vaporised. They're so tiny. That's an amazing piece of engineering. Absolutely amazing. This one doesn't want to come. Mm. Only bigger levers. I remember when I was a kid, people saying the phrase dirty diesel engines. Yeah. This is the dirtiest diesel engine of them all. It's this definitely. Is this is what they meant. Yeah. I think they were normally referring to what they kick out of the exhaust, but. <laughs> This one kept all the dirt inside. It's not a dead engine. No, not We're going to be able to bring this back from the brink. Yeah. Bring it back from the grave. Bring it back to life. Yeah. Many more years of farming left in it yet. Yeah. Oh, fan light is wedgeable. Yeah. There's something very satisfying about stripping an old engine down. Yeah. and investigating inside to see what sort of condition it's in. It's like being a heart surgeon. Obviously, not quite so crystal. Engines like this are really from the dark ages, but there's still something very satisfying about an engine that's basic like this. One that will run for another, another 60 or 70 years. It's 66 years old, so... Yeah. So it'll show a lot yeah. of character to the vehicle and yeah. its history. Nearly 70 years of use. That's pretty good for a machine. We've got no broken studs or bolts yet, which is... Well, that's good, actually. Yeah, that's a very good point. Which means that the likelihood is that, actually, this was a really high-quality engine when it was put together. It had to be, because they were out on the farm, and if they didn't work, the farm lost money. So. 
That's probably why this has not seen any maintenance for a long time. It just, they just wanted to get it out there and use it. Another positive, there's still a bit of water left in the chamber and the water jackets. Yeah. So it's not seeped for anywhere yet. Mm. That should just come off now. Is it going to? Ah, oh, yes. There we go. There's our rocker shaft and rockers and the decompression shaft as well. Now, sometimes you can get little concave dips in the ends of the rocker arms from where they press on top of the valves. So it's got a little, little concave dip in there. So if you were trying to put a feeler gauge in between that and the top of the valve, it would feel tight, but actually there would be a lot of play, which is why often it's better to set up valve clearances using a dial test gauge which allows you to do it with the free movement, which gives you an, uh, an accurate measure of valve clearance. That is the space between the end of the rocker and the top of the valve, which is necessary for heat expansion. We've got down to the bare bones of it now, so the cylinder head's ready to come off. But as it is at the moment. Oh, have you got some movement? A bit of movement oh, here. you've got a bit of movement there. So, bit. let's see if I can get anything happening here. What it looks like is the cylinder head is stuck on this last stud here. Because we've levered it, and we can see that it's moving across every stud apart from this end one. It's moving over all of the studs but this one here, and it's just, just bending that one and waggling it. So what we're going to do here is a little trick whereby we get two nuts and put them onto the stud. So there's the first one on, and there's the second one on. And then just tighten the first one up against the second one, really good and tight. And then Oh, it doesn't want to take that stud out. Right, I've had to get a stud extractor out on this, so the old trick is not going to work, which is a bit of a shame. But this is quite tight, so actually we might have found the one that is going to give us some problems. Okay, it's turning now. Okay, so now we've used the stud extractor to turn the stud and now the stud is coming out so we should be able to get this head off right there's the offending stud nothing much wrong with it just a little bit carboned up along here the uh cylinder head gasket has been leaking a little bit and going mm. tracking through to this stud could mean that mm. could mean it's just a bit weak yeah just a bit gummed up Okay, you ready? Have the big lift. One, two, three. There we go. Right, let's just have a look at this. So here is our cylinder head. And you can see the track of the spray pattern of the injectors. Not seen much wrong with it. A bit of carbon around the valves. But it doesn't look too bad really. Now we've got the cylinder head off we can see the bores of the engine here, the cylinder walls and actually just feeling them they don't feel too bad. Now it's hard to get any level of accuracy with just using your fingers. Yeah so there's carbon buildup at the top here above where the piston rings actually run but below We've got bores that are in good condition, actually. There's nothing visually wrong. Big scratches, scores, steps. Hey ho, the bottom end is not as bad as the top end looks. That's a very, very good thing, too.